Snoring can have a major effect on your health, but can also be detrimental to your marriage. And Dr. Craig Schwimmer, the medical director of the Snoring Center, he is here with advice for couples who are sleeping apart because of snoring. Craig, how are you? Good, Amy. How are you? Good. And this is a startling fact. You brought in some statistics with you today. Is it true so many people, maybe like a quarter of married couples, are sleeping apart? It's true. And it's, I mean, it's remarkable and it's pretty staggering to think about. I mean, you know, I saw this thing on, on CNN a couple of weeks ago. And we'd always known that, that sleeping apart was pretty common because yeah. of sleep disorders, particularly snoring and sleep apnea. Um, but this recent survey shows that 25% of married couples are regularly sleeping apart. Or at least that's how many are admitting it. Maybe it's even more. Exactly. So how bad does the snoring have to be and the sleep disruption have to be that they're sleeping apart? Well, you know, it varies by couple. Um, but sleeping apart is clearly a, a significant and negative consequence yeah. in a relationship. Because then you're not even dealing with the issue because snoring is dangerous. Right. Besides the fact that it's ruining your marriage, there's, there's points that you're not really addressing the problem. Exactly right. So if you've got sleep apnea and instead of treating the sleep apnea or if you've got restless legs, instead of doing something about the restless legs, you simply retreat to separate bedrooms, well, there's a medical problem that's not getting addressed. So even aside from the relationship issues, there are potential health concerns that are mm -hmm. just being kind of shoved aside. Yes, listen to also what they said in this report that you gave me, which I'm sure you already know because you handed it to me. 23% of married couples sleeping apart, but experts say the request for two master bedrooms and a new home are going up. So people are actually building their house according to their snoring habits. It's incredible. And, and if you think about it, so, that, so the amount of time and money and effort that goes into avoiding the problem yeah. rather than dealing with it, particularly when um, Avoiding the problem may mm -hmm. mean avoiding treating some real medical conditions. Okay. So, so the advice clearly is don't just avoid the problem, yeah. address it. Address it for so many reasons. Okay, so what are our options if someone at home is obviously listening to this and saying this is me, I'm sleeping in a separate bedroom, I'm snoring, I'm, I'm sleep deprived, all the other uh, ailments that come along with it, what do they do? Well, you know, like anything else, right? You know, discuss it openly and honestly amongst yourselves and if there's a problem, deal with it in an appropriate manner. So discuss it first with your regular doctor, um, if this is clearly a sleep disordered breathing issue, um, either a sleep lab, a snoring center, um, you know, an appropriate uh, professional. Um, for people with sleep apnea, surgery and CPAP are some of the traditional treatments. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays there are some uh, newer, less invasive, more convenient treatment options. That's what we happen to specialize in at, at the snoring center. And what are some of those treatments? Uh, those things include things such as the pillar procedure, which is an alternative to traditional uh, surgery, mm -hmm. laser tonsillectomy, an alternative to traditional tonsillectomy, something called turbinate coblation to relieve nasal obstruction when that's contributing to sleep disordered breathing. So. Um, encouragingly, some of the new options are more attractive to patients yeah. and therefore less likely to keep them you know, from, from addressing the problem. Less invasive, less pain, less downtime. Yeah. So if someone comes in, they're finally ready to address the problem. The good news is these procedures offer immediate assistance so that you can get back in the bedroom Quicker. short term, right. maybe even the same night. Um, well, it depends upon the treatment, but the, I think that the main point is, is that um, particularly for sleep disordered breathing, snoring and sleep apnea, big, invasive, painful, undesirable surgery is no longer yeah. necessarily what's going to be recommended. Do you think that's what has kept people from starting sure. this conversation earlier because sure. there's people who have not come to see you at the snoring center, they'd rather mm -hmm. build a second bedroom? Well, sure, and you know, undoubtedly there's lots of couples out there and the wife says to the husband, you got to do something about your snoring, I think you have sleep apnea, and he says, well, my brother had this god-awful surgery and it didn't help, I'm not doing yeah. anything. And, and the important message is, is that there are newer, uh, better alternatives. And so there's a variety of options for people to explore, and they really should. Okay, so they can come and see you, have that sure. consultation, see if these procedures are right for them, and sure. get back into the bedroom. It's nice to spoon with somebody in yes, bed. It it's kind of lonely. You get cold if you're by yourself, <laughs> right? All right, Craig, always good to see you. The Snoring Center has two locations in North Texas, one in Fort Worth and one in Dallas. To find out more, log on to snoringcenter.com, and we will be right back.